Hey y'all, in 4 h and h here. Uh, it's January 10th, 2025, the day we had the snowstorm here in Atlanta. And I'll probably release this video sometime later, but I just wanted to film it right now. But that's not the subject of this video. I just wanted you to see that out the shack window there as I'm sipping on my Turkish tea. So, what I want to talk to you about, though, is related to the weather, but not necessarily snow. Any type of moisture. The question has come up a couple of times, why is my SWR out of whack when my antenna's wet? And I just had one a couple of days ago. His DX Commander has a lot of snow up around the base of it, and it's thrown his SWR off. The snow is a conductor. What about even just plain rainwater? Well, so you know that I have a ZS6BKW and I have a doublet antenna system out there that I built. It's a 160 meter length. You feed those with ladder line. See, the, the ZS6BKW is in the doublet family. Well, a doublet is basically, let's just give you a, a, a easy definition. A dipole fed with ladder line. Okay, so ladder line when it gets wet it will skew the swr with ladder line the reason it's good is because it's low loss with a high swr and that's because you've got equal and opposite flow in each of the wires well as the water is collecting on it and probably you know dripping down it it's upsetting that somewhat so it'll throw the swr off now if you've got an amplifier um let me turn mine on that has a built-in antenna tuner, or if you have just, you know, an antenna tuner. Now, you know, you guys know me who've watched my channel for the last four years. You know that I prefer to call antenna tuners antenna matching units, okay? So, quick lesson there. We're not really lengthening or shortening the antenna elements. We're matching impedance. So, really, an antenna tuner is just a sophisticated type of transformer that is taking one impedance and converting it to another. Our radio wants to see 50 ohms. Even a dipole is 73 ohms, approximately. So, you know, when you, when you connect 50 ohm coax to a dipole, you can expect a 1.5 to 1 SWR. Had a discussion on that this week. 1.5 SWR is ideal. I had a guy make a, ne a negative comment on one of my videos he said 1.5 to 1, and he used a word that I, wouldn't, I will not repeat here, but it was a derogatory term regarding a 1.5 to 1 SWR. Well, that's garbage. 1.5 to 1 is, is really considered good. In, in fact, if you were to make a dipole and you get it tuned in the middle of the band, let's just say 80 meter band, so 3.750 megahertz here in the U.S. because we can cover 3.5 to 4 megahertz on the 80-meter band. But let's say you got it down to a 1.05 to 1 at the center of the band. That's great. As soon as you move above or below that, you're going to start seeing it rise. And it could rise to 1.5 to 1, 1.7 to 1. That kind of depends on the antenna type, the design of the antenna itself, how broad the frequency response is. So, you know, you just got to understand that, listen, a 1.5 to 1 is really nice. The old timers, back when we had tube transmitters and, you know, a 2 to 1 SWR tube transmitters like that, all you got, you know, it can handle it. Lewis Varney, G5 RV, his famous antenna. He was just trying to get an antenna that would give him a 2 to 1 on 20 meters in his backyard. He was not trying to make a multiband dipole. And he was pleased to get a 2 to 1. Most of the G5 RVs that are sold today are not even built the way he designed them. So you can't really judge that antenna by modern ones. Don't get me wrong, there are new variations, modern variations of that antenna that are superior to what he designed. Uh, the ZS6BKW that you hear me talk about that I use. It's a computer modeled improvement of the original G5 RV design. But just understand, SWR of one-to-one is mostly not practical and not even necessary. Let me give you this. I recently created a chart to answer a guy on one of my YouTube comments about SWR. A five to one SWR 
is not even quite a 0.5 S unit change. Yeah, five to one SWR, reading that on, you know, if somebody's listening to you on the other end, they're not gonna see the S meter move much more than a half, or excuse me, even a half S unit, if their S meter is accurate. So just think about that, five to one. So what are we trying to achieve when we are so obsessed with SWR? Well, what we're trying to achieve is something that will make our transmitter happy enough that it will transfer all of its energy into the coax or the, or the ladder line. That's what we're trying to achieve. Solid state rigs do not like two to one. You wanna to try to stay under two to one. You don't want to give them a set steady diet of that. If you got a tube amplifier, like a, my AL80B sitting down there underneath underneath that one, uh, well, right below there is the power supply for that Elecraft KPA 1500, but down on the bottom there is my backup, my AL80B from Ameritron, one kilowatt tube amp. I've transmitted into a two and a half to one. I didn't realize it until afterwards, but, you know, it was happy. So what we're really trying to achieve with SWR is we want to just get maximum transfer of energy from our transmitter into our feed line. Can there be losses? Sure. The higher SWR is going to be some losses, but I wanted you to put that in perspective. So we can say that the person on the other end that's listening to you, their S meter is going to drop down, say, from S6 to S5.5 if you have a 5 to 1 SWR suddenly. Let's say you had a 1.1 to 1 and now it goes to a to a, a five to one. So I just wanted to put that, that into perspective for you. You're trying to please your transmitter. Now with that said, let me end this video with a little bit of a, a scientific view of this. Move the camera over. What I wanna do is I'm gonna zoom in on that app right there that's showing power in SWR. That's the Elecraft app, reading it directly off the amplifier over there. Everything's wet out there right now. I'm gonna be on the 40 meter band. Okay, I'm right around 7.147, okay. This ZS6BKW has a perfect SWR, and I say perfect. It's really close to 1.1 to 1 at the center of the 40 meter uh, band. So I'm going to show you, look at that. Wow, that's because the antenna is wet. Oh, hang on, the antenna tuner's engaged. I shot a video about that, <laughs> careful. You don't want your antenna tuner engaged when you don't need it. Two point four to one. The SWR there is normally, uh, let me ID. Okay, I just sent in for H and H test. Um, yeah, so you see this antenna normally right there on on seven dot one four seven, that should be like a one point one, one point two. I think it's one point one normally. So there you see that it's thrown off already. Now the same thing can happen with my doublet. Let me switch over to it, and it does use the has to, has to use the antenna tuner. Okay, antenna matching unit that is built into that amplifier. So let's see what happens here. You'll hear that the, the, the FWR is off, okay? And now it was beautiful before, but we have moisture out there on the ladder line. Now it's clicking over there because it wants to, me to give it a steady carrier so it can compensate, tune. So I'm gonna switch over to AM. Actually, no FM. Side note, in the FTDX10, I do get on AM every now and then, and I don't want to drive my amplifier with more than seven watts. So I went into the menu. The menu of the FTDX10 allows you to go in there and set a maximum for AM, and I have it set at seven. I don't like to adjust an antenna matching unit with seven watts. I like to adjust it with 20. A lot of the antenna tuners will tell you use at least 10. So I'm going to FM mode and running my power up to 20. I'm going to transmit. Yep, 
Yeah, you hear the antenna, it wants, it wants to tune. So I'm gonna tell it right here with the menu, ATU tune. Ah, okay, yeah, see, there's the problem. I'm gonna quit transmitting. I don't wanna damage the radio. I mean, even at 20 watts, you don't want to do that too long. Uh, so what's going on there is the antenna, the doublet is all far enough that the antenna tuner built into the amplifier can't even correct it. So there is your per perfect example of what, of what happens when your ladder line is wet. Now that antenna tuner built into that amp matching unit, it, it's, it's usually pretty good with the doublet and it will match it on 40 meters normally i'll leave you with this my best 40 meter antenna is antenna number one which is my zs6 bkw what could i do right now if i really wanted to use that zs6 bkw well i'm still in fm uh what's this so there's a two and a half to one now i'm going to turn the antenna matching unit inside the amplifier on and i'm going to put it in tune mode and see if it can compensate. And it did. Look, 1.0 to 1. That's probably not really 1.0, it's probably 1.05 ish. So you see, that's what I do, and that's the, the thing I want you to take away from this video is this. If you've got an antenna, and you go, hey, my antenna was perfect. It rained and now my SWR is off. If you've got an antenna matching unit, just go ahead and compensate like I just did. Now I can use my ZS6BKW again. Now after the rain, sun comes out, dries the, the moisture off, you would, have to re, you would have to retune that again, or in my case, you know, I don't even need it at all with that ZS6BKW, but over here on the doublet, if I did tune and compensate for the moisture, when the moisture's gone, I would then have to go back and do a, a, a new tune cycle to go back to what my matching should be when it's dry. Okay, I uh, just wanted to clear that up for you, but remember, that two and a half to one, a tube, a tube amplifier would be okay with that. I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable about doing it for a long conversation, but the tubes are much more forgiving. Solid state, not so much. Just know that your SWR is going to change if you're using a antenna that uses a ladder type of feed line, but also other antennas can shift a little bit according to how much moisture is on them. Usually not major, but in the case of Mac with his DX Commander, with it down in the ground with a, a, apparently a good bit of snow I remember, forget if he told me how many feet was up on the wires. Uh, yeah, that's probably to be expected. All right, hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel. I hope you found this one helpful and informative. And if you would, please hang around for about 42 more seconds. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers. Without them, you would have never seen this video or hundreds of others. Thanks so much, and 73 from N4H&H.